This spiced chicken burger is absolutely so delicious. Tender, full of flavor, and a lot of very interesting textures. Let's talk about the chicken first of all that we're using. So this is our Borbia Quality Assured. It's the corn-fed chicken. So it's uh, fed on maize, so it is, and I, th I think it's super. So it's a skinless breast that I'm using. Um, I've marinated it, or brined it, should I say, in buttermilk. So if we just look in here, so we have some buttermilk. We also have some rosemary, and we have a little bit of sliced orange and garlic. One clove of garlic. See, if you leave this for a couple of hours, or if you can overnight, it's unbelievable. So what buttermilk, the brine does, it gives the most succulent, tender chicken you'll ever eat, honestly. There's an enzyme in buttermilk that will give it so much, so much, give it so much moisture and uh, make it really, really tender. And actually give it quite a bit of flavor with the rosemary and the orange. You can use lemon if you want to. So we're going to dip it in flour into an egg wash, which is one egg and a little bit of milk. And then we also are gonna put it in some breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna spice up the breadcrumbs. We're gonna use two of these spices. You would have seen me using them in quite a few of my recipes. Um, I love them. So this is the organic turmeric and then we have the mild curry powder. You can put harissa into this, you can put cajun into this, you can just experiment, have a bit of fun. So I'm going to put in one large spoonful, teaspoon should I say, of the turmeric. And then we're going to put in two of the curry powder. So it gives a really interesting kind of flavour to it. Now you can chop in parsley if you want, I'm not. You can put in coriander but I am gonna put in sesame seeds. I love sesame seeds, so lots of sesame seeds. The breadcrumbs, these are the Giovatta breadcrumbs that I'm using here, and they're from Mr. Crumb. So that's what we have there. They're absolutely lovely, so just into the bowl. And then we're just gonna mix this all together, just using your hands. Now, so just get in there, it's probably easier to use your hands. You can whiz this up in the food processor if you want to. You can put black sesame seeds into it too, if you want to. And the crumbs are great because they keep, and you can make your own little fish goujons. Obviously, we're using chicken. You can use some lovely chicken goujons too. But I think the key is the really good quality uh, corn-fed chicken. Right, this is really important. So take it out uh, from the fridge, cover it in cling film, leave it for a couple of hours if you can overnight. Uh, this is probably in the, in the fridge for the last maybe six hours. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry it off. So just using some kitchen paper. Okay, and then we're gonna literally lift it, and we're gonna pop it into some flour. The flour is really important, it's gonna help the egg stick. So that's the full breast, skinless, boneless. I'm gonna move this out of the way. With the buttermilk that's there, you could reuse that again. You could keep it in the fridge for a couple of days. Or what you could do, you could put it into a little Tupperware container. You could freeze it, but label it because you've had raw meat in this. But it's absolutely fine to reuse. Um, so that's really, really important. Now, so this technique is known as the panne. Just before I put it into the breadcrumbs, I'm going to heat my pan. I'm going to put a little bit of rapeseed oil. And then we'll put it in the butter in a minute. So we're going to crumb this, bring it over beside you. And then you just make sure you have this all kind of coated in the egg. So really important that the flour helps the egg stick. So just literally just press this nice and gently onto the chicken. You can make these ahead. These can be done a couple of days ahead. You can pop them into the freezer because it's fresh chicken we're using and then you can uh, just literally cook them as you wish. We're gonna pan fry them now. Probably that oil is a little bit hot, I'll just wash my hands now. So just put them very carefully like that onto the actual pan. Now we will put some butter onto that. After handling any raw meats, you gotta wash your hands. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And then we're gonna put some butter into this. So I'm just literally just sealing in the chicken. I am gonna finish it in the oven because it's quite a thick piece of chicken as you can see. We're gonna put some butter, okay? And then just using the tongs. So what the oil, the rapeseed oil is what I'm using. This will give lovely flavor and so will the butter, but the rapeseed oil will stop the butter from actually uh, burning because butter doesn't have a high smoke te temperature, but it has the most delicious flavor. Okay, so just, we'll keep a wee eye on this just for a minute. Because for me, this is probably the most important thing is just, you know, crumbing your chicken. Those breadcrumbs, I forgot to say, will keep in your fridge for about a week and you can freeze them. I often make them in batches and pop them into the freezer, so I do. Now, just be really gentle, turn it over. 
and you can see that beautiful golden brown color that's exactly what I want see that there that's beautiful and the butter will give you that so it will okay turn down the heat I'm gonna give that another couple of minutes then I'm gonna transfer it onto a little dish I'm only doing one breast and some parchment paper so this is like a non-stick silicone paper so nothing will stick to this the oven is preheated at 180 okay so I've just seal in the chicken because if you wanted to cook it fully in the pan you probably have to split it in half and it'll probably take four to five minutes on either side that's quite shall we say a meaty nice uh, large chicken breast that we're using there and I want to be careful because I don't want the breadcrumbs to um, to fall off it again with a little bit of butter a little bit of oil all gives flavor I'm gonna pop that and also what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you this now just when the pan is warm the lovely brioche bun we're just gonna pop that on there and just let that just war warm through just just to warm through I'm gonna pop that into the oven now I want to show you what I'm gonna uh, make we're going to do a lovely bit of pesto mayonnaise so some mayonnaise a couple of spoonfuls of fresh basil pesto so a couple of spoonfuls of that and then you mix this all together this is great in a wrap with ham and cheese even some chicken but I think with the burger it's actually really really delicious so mix that so you have that lovely kind of color I really like that pesto so that's the simply better fresh basil pesto cherry tomatoes this is a lovely little tip for you you probably see me doing this a few times with some extra virgin olive oil so good drizzle of this so again this is the simply better the PGI logo and this is the balsamic so that's a three-year-old balsamic there which I really like so just balsamic vinegar it's one of my favorite vinegars so I got to meet this producer a couple of years ago in Italy and just I have such appreciation for Italian food the way they cook their love of food but their balsamic and their vinegar and how regional Italian food is a little bit of basil and uh, this um, is uh, growing in Ireland some lovely fresh basil and then a little bit of lemon zest so the lemon is an interesting combination with um, the tomatoes but it does work so well and I often have this just with some sourdough bread, a poached or fried egg, and these tomatoes, and a little bit of maybe Parma ham. It just works so well, or the Serrano ham. So if you can leave that, actually I forgot a little bit of salt and pepper. Just a little touch of salt, and also some black pepper. And also when I was uh, crumbing the chicken, there was a little touch of salt in the flour, it was seasoned flour. So that's all your compliments let's just have a little look at our bun it's perfect yeah just warm through that's exactly what I wanted now we're gonna pop this chicken in I already have one done I'll just get my tea towel so the oven is at 180 and this one here took nearly 18 minutes and how you know when it's cooked when it's firm to the touch so this is the thicker part of the chicken so that's firm to the touch but it should be super succulent and moist and moist if you don't like any of the spices you could just have the breadcrumbs a little bit of parsley sesame seeds but I think with the curry powder and the turmeric and you could put harissa as I say you're gonna get lots of really interesting flavors so we're gonna serve this up so remember into the oven 180 it's a fan oven and it just really depends on the size of the breast of chicken and um, this is the simply better corn fed chicken that I'm using and it this one here was in for nearly 20 minutes uh, in total okay so we're just going to do two little dishes one with the pesto mayonnaise and then one with our lovely little cherry tomatoes so the extra virgin olive oil the lemon zest the basil fresh basil is just so nice so we're going to get the base of the brioche bun you can use a regular bun you could use a simply better if you wanted the, the waterford blah which is a really really lovely kind of bread roll made in waterford from Walsh's Bakery that would work really well so a good smear of the pesto mayonnaise and then just using the spoon we're just going to bring over some of these lovely cherry tomatoes so just arrange them just on the base now you can use the big tomatoes you know these are grown in Ireland too which is fantastic and uh, I, lo I love them they're really nice and uh, sweet so they are always at room temperature never from the fridge they can be kept in the fridge easily for three to four days no problem at all so you can see that lovely layer you have the mayonnaise you have the tomatoes there and then a little bit of salad so I'll just get my knife here so I'm just gonna this is some cause salad no need for a fancy rocket anything like that 
you could use oak leaf whatever i'm going to keep it really really simple we're just going to arrange three little pieces of the salad there and them are beautiful oil and vinegar now and the next thing is our chicken for me the star of the show so just using the tongs be really really careful because it is hot okay and lift that on there and then we're going to put this here i'm going to put another little spoonful of the mayonnaise just on top and then the little lid on it and i'm telling you you're not going to be hungry after this how good does that look Mel is licking her lips. That's the spiced chicken burger with that lovely pesto mayonnaise, that uh, kind of like marinated or tomato salsa, you could call it. But I think the breadcrumbs with that really good quality corn fed Irish chicken is the key to this recipe and brining it. If you can overnight, we would have brined ours in the fridge, in the buttermilk, that's what it means. It's gonna give the most beautiful, succulent, tender chicken. I'm telling you, try this recipe. You could also do this with some, um, with some chicken thighs but i think the breast meat it's soft it's delicious it's so succulent and i think with the spicy crumbs it's going to work really really well so i hope you try this recipe i think this is a recipe that all the family would enjoy and of course if i was having this at home i'd have a big bowl of potato wedges or chips and maybe some extra salad so enjoy it this is my recipe for my spicy chicken burger <laughs>